Thank you to everybody. Um, I will promise uh, I will be short, so we have a uh, uh, little time, and I uh, try to uh, try to focus uh, my speech about uh, two different aspects. One is about uh, private collecting, private co collecting uh, worldwide, and. Uh, and uh, the second one is about the new service uh, that uh, especially the wild uh, management industry is uh, trying to offer and providing to, to this kind of uh, uh, collecting uh, people. Uh, my research in the, in the last uh, few months uh, have uh, focused uh, about the rise of private museums. So there are many new initiatives. So uh, many private initiatives uh, about uh, uh, different kind of uh, collector that decided to uh, not only to collect, uh, uh, but also to open a private uh, museum. And uh, there are many reasons in, uh, in this trend. Uh, especially a reason related to uh, at least three different uh, aspects. One uh, is uh, uh, the main motivation is about space. So uh, we know that uh, most of the... Uh, we know that uh, most of the uh, work uh, collected and owned by, uh, by museum is, uh, is in storage. So we think about uh, that the major museum uh, exhibit only, uh, for instance, the Tate only 20% of his holding, uh, the National Gallery 5% of, uh, of uh, the collection, uh, the Guggenheim only 3%. And, uh, and this is uh, really important because uh, before uh, private collectors use uh, to uh, donate uh, their collection uh, to uh, public museum. Uh, but uh, this, uh, this is one of the main reasons uh, they decide when they can uh, to do uh, by their own. So one reason is they don't want uh, donation or their work of art uh, stay in storage. So one is uh, uh, an important aspect. Um, another important aspect is, uh, is also related to uh, the, the, the increasing uh, demand and the increasing uh, demand from different countries worldwide. We know that mainly uh, uh, the collecting, uh, the collector sector was uh, mainly uh, developed in Europe and the United States, but in the last year, uh, the growing of the art market uh, make the sector entry with different kind of uh, country in the, uh, at the worldwide level. So we, I have another before, just to have a, a, a brief uh, dimension. So there was a, a research that uh, uh, count about uh, 350 uh, private museums worldwide. I started to build uh, a database on uh, a private initiative funded by uh, individual collector uh, worldwide, and I count about 450. So it's, a, it's an area of research uh, in uh, in, uh, in progress uh, because there is not uh, a real map uh, of uh, the different kind of initiative but our intent was to try to map uh, uh, the private initiative funded by living collector with a public dimension. So it means that uh, they have a space where artwork are exhibited and uh, uh, the third uh, criteria was also an, uh, an international presence. So we, might, we have uh, uh, only selected a museum with an international presence. It means that they, only, they also have English as a language. So for instance, uh, there are many uh, private museum uh, openings in, uh, in China. So we map only uh, the, the one they, uh, that they have an international uh, reach. 
So just to say that uh, this is a, a recent uh, uh, phenomenon because uh, if we think uh, that uh, the, the funding date is uh, most of the time uh, from 2000 on. So about 70% 70, 70 of this sample open after 2000. So just to say that it's a recent trend. Uh, this one uh, is one of the uh, most important private initiative is uh, the, the Board Museum in Los Angeles and it was uh, funded by Eli Bird, uh, uh, a famous philanthropist, entrepreneur, collector. Uh, just to say that the, there are many of these uh, new initiatives uh, and uh, only the next year I count about uh, 15 new museum opening of this kind. So the, uh, the, the interesting uh, aspect uh, is, uh, is try to figure out and to think uh, about uh, what are the motivation behind uh, this uh, private collecting initiative and uh, what are the challenges of the new, new initiative and, uh, and also what uh, could be the services to provide to this kind of uh, uh, collector. So try to just to have an idea of uh, the collector profile. These are a uh, few research done in the field. Uh, just to have an idea, uh, the collector, uh, the usual collector is a middle-aged and well-educated person. About uh, the age is about uh, 60. And, uh, and uh, most of them are entrepreneurs. Uh, and uh, especially it's important to uh, the aspect of education with a, a, a university degree. Another uh, aspect, uh, curious, is about uh, relationship. So it, it seems uh, from a, a research uh, done by AXA Art uh, that uh, most collectors uh, live in a childless uh, relationship. So this is funny, but uh, is uh, an interesting point because most of the time uh, work of art uh, means uh, is a, is a really uh, is a passion and uh, uh, they treat uh, their collection like uh, uh, not children is not uh, nice uh, maybe to say, but uh, they are really possessive, and uh, we will see also the different motivation driving collecting. Uh, we will uh, understand uh, the behavior. Uh, regarding the, the medium, most of them prefer uh, traditional painting work on paper, uh, so they are on the top of the list. Uh, then sculpture rank second, and, uh, and there are also photography. But I think uh, uh, installation uh, new media are, uh, are less collected, also because are, uh, uh, more uh, difficult to explain, so it's uh, really a niche market, but uh, is uh, important. Um, so let's try to have a, a brief look about motivation, because motivation then at the end affects also the choices of uh, the, the kind of art, art acquired. So it's important to understand that the, uh, collecting is also a way to express uh, uh, a personal identity. So, and sometimes uh, give uh, the collector a sense of uh, pride. Uh, so, the, the motivation uh, can range uh, to the preservation of memory. So, the memory of, uh, let's say, the family. So, uh, just to. Uh, to uh, collect, uh, to express the personality, uh, but also to give uh, an idea of uh, the people uh, and the, uh, the art uh, Owen. So it's important to understand also that collecting is also a way uh, to gain a social prestige to people, uh, distinction, so distinction. And uh, it's a way to distinguish to the other, so in a, in a certain way. There are also uh, 
Uh, there are also uh, fiscal aspects, especially in some countries, not every country, which could affect the, this trend of opening a uh, new museum. Especially maybe in the United States, there are uh, tax relief, and also in Germany. But it changes, so it's important to understand that when, uh, when, uh, when you study the different kind of initiative, uh, the country and the legal setup of, uh, of uh, the, the private initiative in order to understand if there is uh, maybe also this aspect to take uh, in, uh, into consideration. If we try to summarize uh, the different uh, need uh, uh, which could be satisfied by collective, we can, uh, we can uh, define at least four main aspect. So there is a functional need and is uh, really easy, is the starting point. I want to buy something to decorate my place. I want to buy uh, a piece of art uh, to furnish the house. So it's a really the basic uh, need, functional need. There are also symbolic needs because uh, uh, the consumption of, uh, of the cultural product which uh, work of art are, uh, reveals uh, the personality of the owner. So it's a way to uh, communicate uh, the identity. There are also emotional need, also because uh, there are some collector uh, that uh, try really to connect with art, to have uh, a stimulating experience with art, and it change with the personality. For instance, uh, there are collectors that try, uh, that want to uh, really to discover new artists. They want to be the first. They want to be uh, the innovator, and it's also a way to uh, to connect and to know the artists. They want to live and to have this kind of experience. So according to the motivation, there is also a different partner of uh, approach to the art, to the artists they collect. There are also cultural needs, because there are many studies that uh, uh, demonstrate that collecting, visiting museum is also a way to increase the knowledge. Sometimes collectors uh, start to develop a specific uh, research niche, let's say, uh, I collect photography of a certain kind of period and they, they start uh, to be expert researcher because uh, they, uh, they like to collect also to learn every time things. So it changes uh, the behavior and the motivation change according to the personality and uh, the collecting uh, profile of the owner. We can try to segment uh, the collecting practice according to three uh, uh, main uh, models. So there is a model which see the collector uh, driven by passion. So they collect uh, to develop new content uh, with uh, people similar. And the main driver it is the static pleasure, intellectual pleasure. Then there are the traditionalists. So they, con they collect to continue a family tradition. So and they collect other things. So it changes the motivation and also the items collected. They are more conservative in terms of uh, choice. So and they like to collect different kind of uh, items such as furniture, uh, watches, uh, cars, uh, visual arts. So different kind of collectible with a more traditional approach. Then there are the investors, they collect also to invest and diversify their, uh, their, uh, their financial uh, wealth. So this kind of collector maybe is driven by a combination of passion, investment reason, and of course, uh, uh, there is intersection between uh, this uh, model. It's just uh, a way to try to, uh, uh, to look uh, at the collecting practice. 
So just uh, because we have seen uh, that uh, collecting, a part of collecting is also related to uh, the wealth management industry and the art is seen as an investment and a way to diversify um, the, uh, the different investment. Uh, it's important to uh, remember that uh, this, uh, this trend uh, have a drive uh, a, a proportion of investment in, a, in what uh, are called passion investment. So the passion investment include uh, investment which are driven by passion and uh, for instance we have uh, uh, painting, sculpture, uh, we have also uh, jewelry, uh, collectible like uh, cars, uh, sport investment. So the different kind of investment not related to the financial, uh, poor financial aspect. So they are driven by passion. I collect, I do uh, uh, a specific investment also to gain uh, pleasure. So it's a way also to diversify uh, their, their investment and uh, to, um, in a way, to, to protect uh, their saving. So let's have a look uh, at the different kind of uh, uh, the most uh, popular passion investment. Uh, there is a research published by uh, Cap Gemini, RBC Wealth Management. Uh, it's a survey uh, done in 2000. 17, uh, which uh, represent the different kind of investment uh, in passion investment. And the first one uh, is uh, the sector which include watches and jewelry, which account about 30%. Of course, this percentage change according to the different country. For instance, there is a, maybe a behavior, a certain kind of behavior in Europe, a different kind in Asia. So it's just to say that according to different country, there is a propension or more or less to buy and to uh, consume this kind of luxury product. So watches and jewelry account about 30% uh, at the global level, but for instance, if we move in uh, Middle East and Africa, uh, they account for 30%. So maybe it changes from... Uh, uh, the second one, the second one is uh, the category uh, which uh, include coins, wines, antiquity, and it, it, it accounts about 21%. Uh, as again, uh, in North, for instance, in North America, this category accounts for about 30%. So the third, the third category uh, is about uh, luxury collectible, which account for the 20, 20%. 20 percent. And uh, especially, for instance, in Japan, account for about 26%. Percent. The third, the third category is uh, art. So art is part of this kind of uh, passion investment. So it's a way, uh, is part of uh, this portfolio. And uh, uh, globally, it, it, it uh, accounts for about 16%. Uh, instead, in Europe, account for 19%. So just to say that according, uh, as a, again, as according to different countries, there is a, a different behavior and, uh, in, uh, in the consumption. And finally, the last one is related to sport investment, so uh, uh, investing in uh, sport teams, uh, sailing, uh, uh, race horses, and this category uh, account for 11%. So just to have an, uh, uh, this uh, brief overview, just to say that the art is uh, creating uh, also a new market for uh, wealth management services because uh, it's not, uh, is, a, is a consistent, even, even if it is a niche market, but uh, is a, 
is a, is a consistent in term of uh, value. And so uh, there is a, a rising trend uh, in, the, in the art uh, well management uh, industry to try to offer new services to this kind of clients. Uh, and the, uh, the, the well management, uh, the, the financial advisor are starting to include art and also passion invent, investment uh, in, uh, in their offering. So they are trying to develop a new offer, new service uh, related to this uh, target. And uh, they, are not, uh, they are not so many, but uh, when they are planning how to design this kind of services, uh, it's important to, uh, to take in mind that uh, the emotional benefit of collecting uh, is the driving force, so it's different the approach comparing to the other financial asset. So what kind of services uh, collector and uh, uh, are looking for? And, and this is important when, uh, when uh, the financial sector is trying uh, to develop an uh, offering in, uh, in this field. So they are requested art-related services. So it means uh, uh, services related to cataloging, art valuation, estate, estate planning, philanthropy, uh, art secure lending. So uh, uh, all these kind of services uh, imply uh, a big cooperation with different people. So also because uh, uh, the main business of uh, uh, the wealth management industry is not this, but is a way to uh, to connect and to have a network with different kind of specialists. So uh, an important services could be to provide their client our market research, our market research about specific se uh, segment of the market. So for instance, provide a client a report about uh, contemporary art market, a report about a specific segment of uh, Italian art market, uh, classic art uh, report. So in order to understand uh, from an economic point of view a specific segment of, of the market. And, we just, and this uh, is done uh, but uh, really few uh, in a specific sector. So it's a, uh, is a, uh, an open market. Another important aspect is related to estate planning. Just because uh, if your client is a collector with a big collection, is uh, is important to think what to do next. So planning for the next uh, generation. So uh, in this kind, uh, the the wealth management industry could uh, help their their client to define a strategy for the future of their collection. And for instance, uh, there are different. Uh, uh, way so a way is uh, to sell the collection so it means having a relationship uh, with the, the part which could help uh, to sell the collection another one is to try to think to donation to other institutions so it's about our philanthropy is and uh, this is another part important part um, Another aspect could be related to uh, try to think with the client how to, uh, to create maybe a private initiative. So, and this is another, uh, another service, uh, especially if top, uh, top uh, uh, bank worldwide are trying to offer in this. Like uh, UBS, uh, I know that uh, is creating a collector circle just to provide uh, advice on how to set up uh, a private museum, a private initiative, and the philanthropy uh, activities. And, uh, and the last one is about uh, the great uh, the area of consulting, so the well management industry could provide a number of services uh, to set up new private initiative, new uh, philanthropy uh, activity. And, uh, and so the well management industry could uh, provide consulting about uh, the strategy, the, the sustainability of this kind of initiative, defining uh, the goals of the initiative. Also because uh, it's important to point out, uh, just because there are many uh, private museums arising, that each one should be unique, so should cover a specific uh, aspect and uh, should have an identity. 
this is uh, important. I think uh, the real challenges uh, to, to study and to, to point out are related to sustainability, how to live long without the collector alive, so how to live. Uh, lasting, uh, lasting a legacy, and, uh, and maybe also important way to cooperate because you can also have a private initiative, but it's important, uh, which uh, could be unique, so not replicate other uh, kind of initiative. And uh, I think. Uh, uh, if someone of you is interested, uh, I uh, write something uh, about this uh, in, uh, in this book. Uh, and, and so, if you have uh, any question, I think uh, it was a bit quick. Hi, Alessia. What, what do you think, what's your opinion about uh, um, a space in the market for forgeries? And I'm now thinking about Wolfgang Beltracchi's case. For example, uh, if you know it. Sorry, forgery? Forgeries. Yeah, yeah. So do you think, is there a space in the market okay. for forgeries? Hmm. I, I, I have in see. mind what Beltraki see. did, uh, and he sold paintings for millions of dollars to American institutions. That's why I was thinking. See, see, see. Uh, no, uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I don't think there is space. Maybe it happens, uh, uh, but... Uh, I mean, I don't know why, if I think, I mean, if I think about a big collector, you spend, you spend a lot of money, and the first thing is to try to analyze in a better way authenticity, provenience, and also because otherwise you buy something that you, you cannot circulate. I don't know if I understand very well the question, but uh, what do you think? Why you ask uh, a market for this? Uh, because after loads of money has been put into this painting, buying these paintings, so maybe collections want this money back at some stage, and because I have in mind Beltraki's story, which was a bit of an amazing story. Uh, so I would imagine, I don't know if I'm right, I'm just guessing now, but uh, wealthy people interested in forgeries, so they may, may, might try to gather collections of forgeries exclusively for this reason. Because behind forgeries, institutions spend loads of money. And now they don't know what to do with those forgeries, basically. Because they're stuck in the, in the storage facilities. That's why. It's just a matter of being curious. No, no, yes. Thank you for your talk, Dr. Alessia. Um, I'm curious, uh, if I was a very wealthy philanthropist and I had a, an extensive private collection with the intention to have that collection shown and organized and uh, uh, be seen and generate its own income so that it could continue to be seen, would the, uh, how would that uh, be most lucratively positioned to me? as a very wealthy philanthropist with many works of art to show. What, what would be the best way for me to manage my collection? I think this is a, a big question and, and is a, like this kind of service I talk about because it's a way to consider the old wealth and the different uh, investment, so real estate, uh, the company, art, so you have to consider, and also the reason and motivation of the collector. So there are many ways, it depends, uh, it, at the end it depends, uh, if you want, I mean, sometimes uh, when you create uh, as a big collector, you create uh, a space, uh, you invest uh, a lot of money because already you have invested in art, you invest in the building because uh, this expensive uh, building, most of the time uh, involving archistar, so 
big investment also in the building, in the in the people. So what one else? way, Would one reason is about to, to uh, continue to have control to the collection, because otherwise when you donate, sometimes you lose control. Also, if there are uh, many models, and I think uh, I will talk tomorrow when there is a way, the, the panel about cooperation, uh, there are many models uh, which could be a very good way to cooperate between uh, private collector and public institution, but uh, with uh, street agreement about uh, the rules. So, because the, fa the fear, the fear of uh, private coll collector is uh, one to lose control of their children. It's important, the motivation. Lose control, uh, uh, work of art that stay in, uh, in storage, and uh, they are not exhibited. And, uh, and uh, it's important to understand that most of this private initiative brings the name of the funder. So it's also branding. To leave a legacy is a way to live, uh, to create uh, a family legacy. Because uh, if you think about specific museum, there is a name. And uh, if this name, this uh, cultural initiative uh, continue, is the name of your family, family tradition. So it, it depends. It, it's to study the different motivation. Uh, is a blend of motivation, uh, financial and fiscal aspect. It's to, it's a strategy to build. Uh, just as a very quick follow-up. Does, does the establishment of a private uh, institution and museum, how, how does that affect the value of the artwork itself? So as a... Affect. Affect. <laughs> Because if you think, uh, and uh, we will talk later about value, there are many aspects uh, important in creating value, in, a, in a creating or increasing value in a work of art. And of course, one of these uh, is uh, being exhibited or entering in a collection, in a museum collection. When you are a collector, you have the power to, be, to buy the first choice, because uh, you are in competition with public institutions, they don't have enough money to buy. So you buy, I mean, you have the power, and you have also the museum, so you have the first choice because uh, dealers sell uh, their work of art with the, uh, a ranking list. The first one is museum. So I have the power of money, I have the museum, I am a, a big player in the market because uh, if there is a, uh, if there is a a network of important people, they can change the life on a, of an artist. Thank you. Thank you very much.